Hong Kong never sleeps. Hong Kong is just one big sound art piece. <laughs> it's been 21 years since the handover. Hong Kong has been going through a lot of soul searching over these last few decades of what it means to be Hong Kong. There has always been a community of artists that have been producing works that are very specific to the context of the city and the history and to Hong Kong itself. The Adra Archive was founded 18 years ago as an independent non-profit organization based in Hong Kong, but with the purview to call for a more generous art history. Art was created in a certain context, in a certain moment in time, and it can tell you a lot of different things uh, about a particular scene, about a, a particular city, a condition, uh, or certain concerns uh, of artists working in that particular community. When you look at where and how art history has been written, it's predominantly from a Euro-American perspective. And so for the last 18 years, we've been dedicated to building this library and also digitizing archives across the region. We began very China-focused. So for the last 10 years, we've also been working in India and working on a number of archives and projects there. We're currently doing a project in Singapore with the Li Wen Archive, Pakistan uh, with Salima Hashmi's archive. And I think that's what makes us quite different as well because many archives are national in focus. Many begin from a sort of government or state agenda and we are truly independent. From the beginning, the Adra Archive was conceived as more than a static collection of material, gathering dust on a shelf, waiting for the scholar to pull it out. It was always uh, something that was meant to be active, and so over the last 18 years, we have presented hundreds of different public programs, and then also really thinking about the archive as a creative space. And so we've had artist residencies ongoing for the last decade. We're currently working on this archive of the late artist Harvey Chun, who's a Hong Kong artist. He was born in 1925 and died in 2009. And as well as his artistic practice, he was also an incredible archivist as well. We are actually now in a space that's the second life of Harvey Chun's archive. He kept all of his archival materials in his um, former studio in Toguawan in Kowloon. The archive was pretty much left um, the way it was after he passed away and in 2013-2014 the family approached Asia Art Archive to invite us to work on this really amazing trove of art history and that's how we started working on this archive. Well, there's very little material on the art history of Hong Kong say in the 60s when there were very few exhibition spaces. In here, you actually find actual invitation cards giving you the venue, the participants, the date. So it really fills in that gap of not really knowing what happened in the 60s and 70s. There are all of these different layers within Hong Kong that the archive keeps opening up as such. I think a lot of people are very uncertain about the future of Hong Kong, but we can give individuals a different way to perceive the world, to perceive their lives through art and through artists.